and rejoice and sing praise. Did you come expecting this morning? Yeah. Are you, did you come ready to give that loud noise to the Lord? Amen. It's a beautiful day outside and it usually makes our hearts a little lighter with everything that we see on TV and hear in our ears and the work week that we've trudged through. But we are here and we're going to make a joyful noise and celebrate the earth. Is there anyone that needs a prayer, that has a prayer request before we move on? I know there's lots still out sick. Some are staying home because of, the, of COVID. We want to remember them. If you know somebody that's not here, Sister Judy, if you're watching, we miss you. Um, the Moors, we miss them. We um, welcome the, We are ready for when we can welcome them back in the house of the Lord. Amen. But if there's somebody that needs a prayer request, I know, um, keep praying for our daughter-in-law's father that's going through cancer. Um, and her sister that's going to have her baby delivered tomorrow morning. That needs covered in prayer. Yes. Um, My nephew has MS and he's got COVID now. Oh, this is Roselle's nephew that has MS that we've been praying for now has COVID. Mark? Pray for Caitlin. Caitlin? My dad. Your dad. We're going to continue praying for your dad. Sandy? My niece, Cindy. She's a <coughs> torn retina. Oh, yes. She's blind in her eye right now and they're trying. We're praying for healing to come back to her eye that she was a pain or something. Okay. For her eyes. Yeah, that's terrible. My grandfather went through that when he uh, was kicked by a horse. Mm. Yeah. So lots of prayer requests. There's lots of people that are out there that are fighting COVID and things like that. Um, um, let's all stand. We're going to pray as we go back, and then they're going to lead us into a loud praise and worship. We're going to get excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. We're standing on his holy ground. Dear Heavenly yes, Father, we Lord. thank you that once again you. we have the freedom, yes, the privilege yes. to walk into your house, Lord, and to gather together in your holy name, Lord. We want to put aside all the burdens and the things that are clouding our minds, and we want to be with our corporate body here, Lord, praising you, praising your name. We bring our prayer request to you, all of these people that are suffering, that need a healing in their body, but God, they need a touch in their heart as well of encouragement. Lift them up, God. Give them the strength that they need to go through the battles that they're fighting today. All of those that are at home watching that can't be here, God, we ask to send your loving arms wrapped around them. God, as we go forth in this praise and worship, we come before you, humbly yet boldly. Lord, we thank you once again for the, for the opportunity to be here this morning. We love you, Lord. And we, are known, we know that you're going to do great and mighty works yes, with all of these prayer requests and the things going on. Yes, and God, we can't see the future with our fleshly eyes, but you hold our future in your hands. No matter who's in power, in government, no matter who is over us in physical authority, God, we know our ultimate authority. God, we're leaning on you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Yeah. 
Association of Music, not music industry, but music ministry. And we will have gospel singers that minister, and they will be coming all the way from as far away as Front Royal, Virginia, wow. South Carolina, wow. Nashville, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, and the great state of Texas in that foreign country called California. <laughs> I was delivered from that state. <laughs> Thank God I'm in Texas. How many Texans do we have here this morning? Can I hear a yee oh, I like that. <laughs> hey man, you can they tell me that when I was, first came, when I went back out to California to visit, they said, you can always tell a Texan, but you can't tell them much. That's right. That's right. But I thought, well, you can't tell them much because they already know it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it's okay to brag if you're from Texas. Well, I'm, I'm a naturalized citizen. I came here as a citizen of California, but I married that beautiful lady there, and that made me a naturalized citizen yes, of Texas. So I have credentials. Amen. I can stand up and say, y'all, just like you can. <laughs> Amen. Right. It's, it's okay to have fun in God's house. Yeah. I believe when we get to heaven, Brother Gene, we're going to have a we're going to have a lot of laughter. We're going to have a lot of praise. We're going to have a lot of worship. And we're going to have a oh, who knows? The Bible says the half has not been told. That's right. What do you think would happen if we heard the other half? Wow. I believe I don't believe this mind of mine could contain it. Amen. Well, it's so good to be in God's house this morning, and we're going to have a great evangelist here, Brother Gene Summers. We'll be bringing the word in a moment. But before, I'm going to tell you, if, if you're out there, those that are watching online, your gospel group, we want you to come and visit us in April, April 20th through the 23rd. And it's, there's no admission charge. This is something you can come in and just come in and be part of us. And I'm going to tell you this, all roads lead to West Bay. Amen. All roads lead to West Bay. We had somebody in here from Canada a while back. They proved that all, all roads lead to West Bay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a seat with your name on it, so just come on out and be with us. We'd love to meet you, love to see you in person. You're watching us now, we want to see you. Amen. Would our ushers come at this time? <laughs> oh, I love to hear. I was home watching a couple Sundays ago when this big guy right here was receiving the offering, and you didn't clap. And he thought you'd been clapping for me, but no, they've been clapping because they love to give to the Lord. Right. It wasn't for me. It was, it was, it was to give to the. These people love to give to the Lord. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give unto Thee. We thank you for your blessings. 
and all that you have done for us. And as we receive this offering, we pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver. Amen. 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 Brother Ware. Just leave it on all use that way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is everybody happy? Yes. yes, sir. It's good to have uh, Dwayne Hagen back there. He real, we, he needs a lot of prayer. He can't hardly breathe, but he's in the house of the Lord. And he has a book, and uh, I bought one. So he later on, after maybe next week, he can buy one and check it out. So he's been here. We've known him for a long time. He's got some health problems, but we know that God's going to take care of him. That's Amen. right. Praise the Lord. It's good to have Gene. Last time he was here, I paid him full price, and he was half. He was just uh, going around on a crutch. Oh, uh, that's had, right. He had his leg up, and I yeah. said, if I knew he was going to be crippled, I wouldn't have paid him a full price. <laughs> 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 I, I got to do that with him, you know, because we're all jokesters. But it's good to have him and uh, his lovely wife, Mona. She used to be a cheerleader, right? Still yeah. cheerleader for Gene, I right? Are you still a cheerleader for Gene? Yes. Wow, he, was he a football player? Not much of one. <laughs> anyway, well, it's good to have him. Now, at, all these years later, after how many years of marriage? 47. 47. Let's yeah. get him yeah. <laughs> You come on up here and stand oh. so everybody can see you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure, Pat. Mess with you a little bit because I love you. Oh, I love you yeah. too. And uh, anyway, why well, it's so good to just uh, be in the house of the Lord, and, and we're going to really get the word today. Look at this; he's got all these sermons here. And, oh and, yeah, yeah. I'm going to preach them all today. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see how it goes, and maybe we'll have him back. Here Amen. In a while. Okay. So, but anyway, I want to turn it over to you, and I want to just say that we're so glad you're here. Okay, and your family, your daughter, and uh, the future son. Yeah. Wow. That's I'll right. introduce yeah. them. Well, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, this is this is my daughter Janelle, and and her fiance Ted, and 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 Ted. You know, we had anybody have a Christmas party this year at your house? Did you have one? We did, and uh, and so we're all gathered kind of in the the dining area. And Mona's got all this stuff fixed up. We're going to chow down on it a little bit. And there's a, the doorbell rings, and uh, and and I look out. And there's a mariachi band <laughs> on my porch. I don't know if that happens to you all the time, <laughs> but it does, sure doesn't happen to us. And me, uh, boy, muy piquito español. I can say, I mean, vamos para la casa está lloviendo means let's go to the house. It's raining, you know. Uh, I learned that in a light shop from some Hispanic buddies of mine. But uh, I saw them, and, and Mona told me, she said, they're, they're, they're here. And I, I opened the door, and I thought, well, maybe they need directions. And when I opened the door, they just walked right in through my house all the way to the living room, and I started playing, what done I met her? What done I met her? I love that song, anyway. Uh, anyway, they, they started playing, and... And Ted proposed to Janelle, and uh, and uh, and asked her hand for marriage. It was fun. It was a blast. This guy, he's just a class act. And Ted Fisher, and, and uh, he is he's a sweetheart. His dad is a minister as well. Now the 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 guy with hair, I'm telling you, it's not fair. It just didn't right. You know, to have that much hair. But uh, that's Josh, and that's Ted's son. And a couple of weeks ago, Mona and I went and watched him in a play <laughs> performance and uh, over in the Deer Park where he attends school, and he was the lead man. And of all things, his real-to-life girlfriend had the other lead part with him. And uh, was it called Guys and Dolls? I thought it was. Hey! Hey, I pulled that out. But uh, it was a wonderful event. And hey, anytime you can keep my attention for more than two hours, uh, that's that's pretty good stuff. Because I was 
ADHD self-diagnosed. <laughs> of course, that pretty blonde down there and uh, is uh, is Mona, and uh, we passed her. What a what a delight! I, uh, of course, Rosella. I never talked to him about booking in here. It's always with you. And uh, I, I thank you. And I'm I mean, not the boss either. I, I told I told uh, I told Mona. I said, you know, uh, we go in these churches. We're going to impress some of these pastors. But the ones I'm really trying to impress is their wives. Amen. Because if, if they like you, you'll get to go back. And, and I know some of you are wondering, well, what are you talking about? Well, listen, Mona and I pastored, pastored, pastored for, uh, for 25 years. And if there was somebody that came to me that did, just couldn't carry the mail um, in a pulpit, she'd say, hey, and she never uses foul language. So she would say, hey, don't let that goober come back. <laughs> goober, that's the biggest word we've got right now. And uh, and uh, so uh, I, I tell you, we appreciate year after year your pastor and Sister Roselle. Thank you so much. Love them. Appreciate them. Pray that you'll uh, be praying with us. I told pastor yesterday, Mona uh, had some tests run right at the end of the year and uh, here at the, the first of this year and uh, a, a test that uh, has caused us to go look for a, uh, a breast oncologist and, uh, and Mona has got one. They'll be calling her back this week and we're just believing God. No, we don't have any results yet, but uh, we're just believing the Lord for uh, for good things, amen? amen. And uh, that's what the Bible tells us to do, is to, uh, to have a good report and believe on a good report, and we do. Uh, so many of you folks have faced things and, uh, and life, and, and boy, don't we all go through some things, some battles in life. And I, I'm going to talk about a few of those today. And uh, so if, if, if you uh, are wanting to read along, I'm going to uh, First Chronicles uh, 20th chapter, Pastor, that's the Old Testament. Old Testament. And, uh, hey, <laughs> uh, let up. He loves picking on me. <laughs> Amen. I, uh, uh, I, uh, I, Brother Ernie McDonough told me right after I preached here last year on that, oh, I hated that knee bike. Any of y'all ever had to roll one of them around? <laughs> I'll take, no, man, you had to live. Did you know those things can uh, take you head first? It's amazing what happens if you uh, if you get cocky on that knee bike. And uh, Mona was my driver for no less than probably five months, and, uh, and that was not that was not a fun ride for her. And uh, I uh, there, I guess there's something worse than a backseat driver is whenever he's in the front seat. And uh, I just, you know, I just, uh, I, I'm not good to be chauffeured around. And, uh, and Mona's not good at taking orders. I like the way you're shouting now. Uh, I just give a quarter for who you're thinking about right now. Be so deep. First Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and verses four through eight. I wanna try to get you out of here before 1.30. I like that. yeah, that's sweet of you. I, and it came to pass after this. Of course, then I'm, I'm going to go to Second Samuel 21. I won't leave you behind on this. First Chronicles 20 and 4. And it came to pass after this. After what? After David killed Goliath, that there arose war at Jazir with the Philistines. At which time Sibichai the Hushethite slew Sipiah that was of the children of the giant and they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines and Elhanan the son of Jair slew Lami the brother of Goliath the Jittite whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath where was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were 
four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Second Samuel 21 sounds a lot like what you've been listening to for the last two minutes, but, uh, but listen to this again. Second Samuel 21 and verse 15. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines and David waxed faint. And Ishbibinab, don't you, hey, I, I bet, what county are we in here, Pastor? <laughs> We're in Ishbinab County. Kansas. Yeah. I, I bet y'all want to go down to the county seat tomorrow and rename a son or two. <laughs> Ishbibinab. <laughs> what? The boy must have been ugly. <laughs> Which was, he was the son of the giant and weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass and weight he being girded with a new sword thought to have slain David but Abishai the son of Zerah secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him then the men of David swear unto him saying thou shalt no more go out with us to battle that thou quench not the light of Israel and it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibichai the Hushethite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. There was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jehoragim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, the brother of David, slew him. And these four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Pray with me. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to preach this gospel. I pray for an anointing now to touch these lips of clay and make my tongue as the pen of the ready writer, as David declared in Scripture. And I pray that you would anoint the ears of the church, that they would hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to them today. And Lord, help us as we rise up in victory, in real victory, for knowing that real victory is rising up one more time than you're knocked down. We yes. believe that. Touch this message today upon people's hearts, and we pray, amen. 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 I, I want to preach to you for a time this morning. Uh, Goliath's got kids. Now just wrap your mind around that. Goliath's got kids. When I first read some of these things in the Scriptures, I don't know if you've tried Bible reading and reading your Bible through in a year, <clears throat> but if you're struggling at nighttime to get rest, I would submit to you probably one of the neatest things to do is start reading your Bible when, before you go to bed at night. I promise what will happen is that, uh, that, that you will get sleepy immediately. And, and if, if you need a double dose and you've really been having a problem sleeping, then go over to Matthew, the first chapter, and begin to read. When we were kids, we didn't call it the genealogy. We called it the begats. And if you'll read all, all of the begats, I promise you that sleep will overwhelm you. So whenever I get up and I read Scripture like I just did to you, you, you've got to be wondering how that any of this really fits in the, in the kingdom realm. And, and honestly, it, is it possible that God is a really great writer, but many times we're bad readers? Because when you begin to look at this and begin to measure what is taking place to, to the Israelites, and it continues to follow David even from the time of of slaying Goliath for many years over. 
I mean, who doesn't love to preach about Goliath? What sports commentator out there today hasn't at some time in his sports career that, that, that what is a sports personality that has used David and Goliath and the scenario between the two to say that there's one that is a, a giant. They, I remember when they used to call the Dallas Cowboys a Cinderella team. Anybody remember that? And they used to use the, the Cowboys and, and because they were the youngsters in the league back in the 60s and and yet they did some great things and then they started using the the equivalent of, of David and Goliath. What Sunday school teacher hasn't enjoyed sitting in a little uh, primary class and using little characters? And back in the day we didn't have uh, projectors to do that for us. We had to have little sticky uh, things that did they, the flannel board. Anybody remember flannel boards? And they would take and somebody who had a real artistic uh, talent and ability would draw them a, a, a giant and they would take it, put it on the flannel board. And before the class is over, you had a wonderful story of how David uh, is able through the power of God to declare to Goliath, you come against me with a spear and a sword, but I come against you with the Lord God of Israel. And boy, when the giant falls, it's just a wonderful victory. And then the teacher pauses and said, but the real victory took place when he walked up over that giant's body and severed his head from his shoulders with his own sword. And boy, the Israelites were able to chase the Philistines for days down through those that countryside all the way back to Jazir, all the way back to Gath. It took six or seven days for them to run them all the way back to town. And you could declare if you were teaching this and preaching this, well, that's where the story ends. Is that right? No, sir. How many of you have ever spent any time at all in... Um, in the, in the book of Job, it's certainly not part of my message this morning as far as my notes, but I remember uh, there was a man in the land of Nod whose name was Job. He feared God and eschewed evil. Man, he hated evil. How many of you understand we need to raise up people that hate evil? Amen. I, I, could it possibly be that, that our, our country is so out of touch that when Mike Pence Oh, a few years ago made a statement that we've got whenever something really ugly happened, an assassination of some, some uh, Dallas cops, that, that Mike Pence made a statement and said, we, you need to recognize that there is a prevalent evil in this world. And whenever he did that, the, the ladies of the view, I use that word ladies very loosely there, <laughs> the women of the view began to hold high carnival with our uh, uh, armored vice president. I'm telling you, we're, we're in a day when people don't recognize that we need to hate evil. And so this man, Joe, uh, knowing that, that he hated evil, that many of us know the story of Satan going into the heavens and declaring to God, you, you built such a, a wall around him, I can't get to him. And yet the Lord said, well, consider him, give it a try. And he lowered the hedge around him. And the Bible uses the terminology, a day came, and a servant came, and another day came, and another servant came. Huh? That, come on. How many of you know we're writing a hee-haw song right here? <laughs> yeah, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it were for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. It's a terrible an evangelist has to memorize something out of hee-haw. But I'm telling you, there's this, it's a difficult place. By the time you get to the end of the what? The second chapter? Uh, Job is making a statement. Things haven't got better. He makes a statement. The thing that I have feared the most has come upon me. And then the last verse of that text says, I was not in a place of quietness. I was not in a place of safety. I was not in a place of rest. And the tagline says, yet trouble came. You ever been there? 
Well, how many of you know what satanic attack is? I would submit to you that there's, I doubt <coughs> there's even one devil worshiper in the room. I'll give you that. If you're a devil worshiper, you, well, you're not a very good one if you're here on Sunday morning. <laughs> I just, I'm just saying. And I, but, but I'll tell you how many of you understand that uh, you, you don't have to be a devil worshiper to be attacked by the enemy. That's right. Satan loves to come against you and I. And, and, and here, the, the, Israel is about to find it out the hard way. It's in the fourth verse. There arose war at Jazir with the Philistines. Uh, verse 5. And there was war again with the Philistines. Verse 6. And yet again, well, there was war at Gath. And the last part of that verse explains exactly who the war is with. And he also was a son of the giant. I just tell you, all of us have been at these places where we have met these giants in our lives. They, they, they're intimidators and they're imposing figures upon you and I. The Bible says they come in like a flood. Do they not? They come against us and they come against us in all manner of directions. I don't know if you found this out, if you've been living for the Lord for very long at all, that if he can't attack you in one place in your life, he'll attack you in another. I, I recognize what young, uh, I'll use the terminology green, Christians are. I'm, I know what rookie Christians are like. I, I pastored and, and we help disciple them and bring them along. How, how many of you have an idea, you know what a rookie looks like? Yeah, what is it uh, when you, they say, people say, well, you know what I need to do. I just need to pray for more patience. How many of you old timers know that's the first thing on your list you're not praying for? <laughs> yeah, for tribulation of our faith, work and patience. Uh, the, the late great John Madden just passed away recently. And in his first color commentating, whenever on CBS Sports, he was doing a night game, like a Monday night football, and he was uh, doing one of those games, and at half, near halftime, almost at halftime, a fight breaks out on the field. And everybody got quiet and started looking at the, the benches are clearing and they're brawling at midfield. And only John Madden is the one that comes up with something that is so unique. And he says, look, you can tell who the rookies are. They're pulling their helmets off. <laughs> There's not a gentleman in this place that had not played some football that knows when that fight breaks out, leave that helmet home. <laughs> Somebody's going to clock you upside the head. I tell you, and, and people in church know we don't go around praying for patience because we know we're going to get it by the installment plan. <laughs> day in and day out, tribulation of our faith work of patience. Well, Mona and I, my goodness. What, what, yeah, how, how many of you know the enemy loves to attack your finances? Amen. Well, when Mona and I got married, well, what, 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 what song? We got married in a fever. Never mind. <laughs> <coughs> I tell churches all over the United States, Mona and I got married. She was 17. None of your business how old I was, but she was 17 years old. And people asked, oh, said, my goodness, what what'd you, what'd you get married so young for? And I said, she couldn't keep her hands off of me. <laughs> it's funny, people like, y'all don't believe me. That's amazing. That's, that's always a low point in my message whenever I mention that. I, I just say, boy, we, and, and, and boy, whenever we were trying to build a home and our finances, and how many, how many of y'all were broken in the Ten Commandments when you got married? Man, we were so poor we couldn't pay attention. We're doing our best to whoop the, whoop the wolf of finance away from our door, and a stork flew right in the window. And brought us that one right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 we, we thought we were going to get ahead. We just knew. We, my God, I hate it when Sears calls and says they want their refrigerator back. 
Don't let away your shout. I'm telling you, I, 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 I hated that. I, that was so difficult in life. The enemy loves to just pick at places and see if he can destroy you. I, I, I was thinking this morning, I handed my tithe check to Mona. Appreciated you taking the tithe. I, I don't like to try to preach without paying my tithe first. My goodness, I I pastored, I watched people that were able to not pay their tithe and yet receive communion. And I thought, you're talking about an oxymoron. How can you? Amen. You, you want to partake of the cup and you want to break bread and eat it, but you don't want to pay your tithe? It, it, is that, that's not, isn't that a little wrong? I like the way you're shouting now. Hold on just a minute. I do not ever preach use it. that again. Yes, preach, preach it again. At West Bay. Yes. I got that. I, I just, my goodness. When you, when you don't pay your tithe, you look God in the face and say, you're not big enough to take care of the needs in my life, so That's I'm right. not paying my tithe. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, I never, I, I was raised knowing that I couldn't afford not to pay my tithe. Right. My, my parents went so far. You want to hear a story from the 50s? My parents used to tell it to me all the time. Dr. Brother Gordon Gibson pastored us at Dale Dale Tabernacle, Pentecost Church of God in Channel View. A little church where my mom and daddy got saved, and uh, they were just, just in their 20s. Dad strayed out of Korea, fighting in Korea in the in the 50s, Mary's mom. And, and man, I went to church nine months before I got here. <laughs> and and, and my, I'm talking about satanic attack on your finances. I, I, I have gone there. And and yet, Brother Gibson said there was a man who, who was quite a well-to-do man in our little Pentecostal church there and said that, that uh, he, he paid his tithe faithfully. And so then he came to the pastor and said, would you pray that the Lord would bless me and prosper me so I could make a little more money? And he got, he, because of people praying, he was elevated in his workplace and given more hours, a better salary. And then came the faithful day when he came in and told Brother Gibson and said, Brother Gibson, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I make so much money now, there's no way I can pay tithe of that amount. And Brother Gibson, and I know this, of our old pastor, he baptized me when I was eight years old in 1961. They said he held me under and tried to read the 119th Psalm. <laughs> Not but 176 verses there. But I, evidently I held my breath long enough. But old, brother, old Brother Gibson looked at him and said, That's okay, pal. He said, if, if you can't do that, I'm going to begin to pray that God will take you all the way back where you can do uh, with what, what little you used to make and, and still be faithful in God's house. Don't shout me down when I'm doing so good. That's right. Is that a good old story? Yes. I'll tell you, do you know the man started paying his tithe? I'll tell you, the enemy loves to attack us in unscrupulous ways. And you would not be the first person that was, once you paid your tithe, looked at the... I came home one night. And, uh, sorry, Roselle, I can't stay still. Okay. <laughs> you folks online, you bear with us. But uh, uh, my, I come home, I had only been uh, probably in ministry a few months, 1976. And, and boy, here I was. I'm so excited to be a... Of preachers and the assemblers to God, and 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 uh, it's a Wednesday night, and Mona has driven from Dayton, Texas, out on the Ball Prairie, and and she was driving all the way back to my dad's church, the old theater on Market Street in Channel View. I know you remember, and and uh, <laughs> uh, she comes home that night. It's time. For my Ford pickup, my fixer repair daily, my Ford pickup, it's time for the, for the payment. Y'all want to hear the amount? $156. And it was off the showroom floor. Had that 
sharp little 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 paint job on him. There's no telling that truck was probably five or six thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> that truck would be ten or twelve times that now, wouldn't it? Man, I I, I remember I came in, I said, Woo, I'm oh, I need to mail off my truck note. So I went and got the my checkbook, and when I flipped it over, my my checkbook had become like some of you at the end of the year when they check your giving amount. You had become Catholic. Because it said none. And I looked at it and said, Mona. I had money and plenty of money in there to pay my my truck note, and you zeroed it out. What what happened? She said, "Well, I was at church tonight, and I got to thinking. All those years you sang nightclubs and you run crazy at the rodeos and 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 just going nuts. You weren't paying tithe during all that time. And I thought, the Lord, the only way I know to justify this." It's to zero that account. And so everything we had in the bank, I gave it to Faith Tabernacle Assembly of God tonight. <laughs> I'm sitting there without a truck note, and it's due in, in about 10 days, and I, I love to pay that thing early. <laughs> Do you know, before the night was over, Slim Williams, my superintendent out at Shell, working for Hydrocarbon Construction Company, called me and said, come pick me up at 2 in the morning. I started paying you right now. And then it's double time and a half since it's union work. And you're going to come out and spend, I'm telling you, I must have put in a 30-hour day back when you could do such a thing. And before two or three days was up, I had several truck notes that was made. Mona and I just found out a long time ago that, that God will make sure that, that you be a debtor to no man and, and whenever you are faithful to God. Amen. It says right here, if not shout by now, turn the page. <laughs> but Mona, you know, if, if there's another place the enemy loves to try to batten you is in your marriage. Woo! Mona and I, we've never physically fought. But we've had some conversations you can hear a block or two. <laughs> I mean, the pink cloud of happiness doesn't always hang over our roof. But I remember when we got married, I, she was so beautiful. Man, that little, man, Channel View High School head cheerleader. Oh, yeah. All the pigeon toe and everything, you know. Oh, man. She says that's not true, but, man. I looked at her, I said, I love you so much. Woo! We're going to be together the rest of our lives. And she took a deep sigh. <laughs> I told her, I said, if you ever decide to leave me, where are we going? <laughs> if you ever decide to run off and marry somebody else, I'll have just have me a husband-in-law. <laughs> yeah man I'm telling you boy God gave us two beautiful daughters and, and gave us six grandkids how many of you know what grandkids are God's gift to us for not killing our kids when they were teenagers and it goes double if you had girls Amen. Amen. oh man the devil loves to fight us in our, in our marriages he likes to fight us in our homes. He likes to fight us in our finances, our, our ministries. My goodness. Uh, whatever, what, whatever, but Mona and I, 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 I know I hate to just keep going back to finance, but I remember, I remember being so broke and I answered, how many of you understand any time you say yes to the Lord in ministry, that hell is going to try to decide to hold high carnival with your life? Anytime I've ever ventured out to do something for Jesus, it has always cost me somewhere else in my life. Right, amen. And, and my goodness, I, we, we, we had house payments. I sold a, that big old place out in the country, 10 acres of land, and I had answered the call to ministry, and 
I sold my, my heifer calves that were all springing with new baby calves. And oh man, I sold any farm equipment I had. And, and boy, we moved back to the Channel View area. And that's really whenever I, I met these folks, the Hawksworth, and we got credentials, started pastoring our first church. It was amazing. I was walking through that home. I built Mona a home. And uh, about 2,600 square feet. Nice, beautiful Spanish chateau, I think was the design of it. And, and, and we got behind on those payments because once I said yes to the Lord, I lost my job. Y'all ever been out of work? Oh, I, I'm sorry, guys. If that's sitting at the house not paying the bills, that, that's, hard, that's hard stuff. It wore me down. Man, those, and those huge house payments, $499 a month. <laughs> Man, that Chevrolet we were driving, Chevy Chevette, we still needed a car. <laughs> Brand new, $99 a month. Man, get behind old man. I walk in the floor one night. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Trying to pray in the Spirit a little bit. Try, the Holy Ghost, help me now. Oh, Jesus, I need a bailout. And, and the Holy Ghost evidently got fed up with me. Y'all ever have that happen? The Holy Ghost just gets fed up listening to you. And I felt just in my spirit like a tap on the shoulder in that hallway and, and, and about to rub a hole in the carpet. And, and, and the Lord said, you think you're doing me a lot of good by walking this floor and begging for help? And I thought, well, Lord, I thought it was. He said, why don't you go down there? And get in bed with your new baby and, and with your wife. Just go 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 get in the bed. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, man. Okay, Lord. I went in there and got in the bed. Seven o'clock the next morning. Lady from Channel View, Texas. And you're going to think I'm making this name up. Lois Gildart. <laughs> I mean, why didn't I just say McGillicuddy? <laughs> My goodness. Lois Gildart. And boy, she loved Royal Rangers. She loved my Royal Strangers. Ooh. She, uh, she'd give to me if I had a Royal Ranger camp out. She'd fork over hundreds of dollars for whatever it need, uniforms or anything. But boy, when Mona and them little girls in ministry, them missionettes, y'all remember them? Boy, if Mona need anything, she's broke. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. If old, if, old, if old Gino Lois was probably in her late 80s, she, I think she passed just before her 90s. But I'll tell you, man, if I needed something for them boys, she'd go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd find money to, to be able to help us. And at 7 o'clock the next morning, I've been up to 2. I didn't want to get up at 7. And boy, she rang that phone. Uh, uh, Jesus, are, are you awake? Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, she said, can you come pick up a check? I said, I'm in a three-point stance right now. <laughs> I'm on my way. It's like us evangelists now out in the front yard before the mail runs. <laughs> I like the way you're shouting now. Y'all don't have many evangelists, do you? I'll tell you, boy, pastor, I, I ran over to Lois's house, and she said, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on with you. I know you answered the call of the ministry, but at 2 o'clock this morning, I could not, I was woke up out of a sound sleep, and I must have stayed up an hour or two worried about your situation and wrote me a check that took care of three house payments, two car payments, come on, and by the time Mona had walked through the grocery store and me standing there holding them little girls, can you believe Woo! And we, I'm telling you, we spent every dime of it that day. I, we found out my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Devil loves to attack us in an unscrupulous way. Some of you young marrieds 
And, and young people need to understand something. The reason that we have such a positive outlook about our finances is because we found out a long time ago that the light bill does get paid. That the house note somehow does get paid. Come on. And God has proven that to us over and over and over again. And we just fight. There's different giants that come our direction. Hi. You ever had a kid run away from home? No. <laughs> oh boy, get you some of that. You want that tough love? Y'all ever tried that tough love? Who was it? Uh, the late great E.B. Hill that said, um, he said, something came to the door the other day to see my daughter, Norvell. And he said, when I heard the boy knock and I looked at him through that stream door I said son can I help you he said I'm here to see your daughter he said definitely not <laughs> he said sir he said I gotta tell you that sister Hill went to death's door to bring that baby into this world and we have decided to give her to better than the likes of you <laughs> I'm quoting him Sometime when you have time going to YouTube, it's not a video, it's audio. Well, I'll tell you, I, whoo, you folks that struggle with Reader's Digest probably don't need to go there. But I'm telling you, it was amazing to hear him, and you can hear him. Thank you, Pastor. You're a good man. Not many of us left. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, I, 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 Evie Hill said, he said, when well, Norvell come running down the stairs, Daddy, Daddy, was that for me? He said, definitely not for you. And then he begins to yell in that meeting. He, he's preaching his wife's funeral. And then he, he begins to yell, you, you got to mate them up. You don't get racehorses out of mules. Right. And Janelle was dating this little old boy that, Mm, mm, mm. Mona come to how many of y'all know some things have to be broke up? And boy, we we made them break up. I didn't know it was gonna bust us up. I I didn't want to feel none of that. Come home on a Friday night and Barbers Hill High School over here had asked me to pray over their kids running into one another in a football game. How do you do that? And, and so I, I got up, did the best I could, watch the ball game. I, I never remembered whoever won that game. I got home, walked up in the, into the, the parsonage, and hanging in the mirror across the room. It's not a Dear John letter, it's a Dear Dad letter. Well, Dad, it lasted 15 years. <laughs> I looked at Ted and I thought, what in the world is going on here? I looked at Ted. She's left home, going to her bedroom, and her closet's cleared out. Her other chest of drawers are... I don't think I've ever got to tell this in front of her. This is so cool. <laughs> I got her permission years ago, but I, I'll tell you, this, it, it, I'll tell you, so Ted, you listen to this. <laughs> well, man, I, I, I remember, I told Mona, I said, I, I, I'm busted up. This kid's never been abused. Hey, help me out. What, you know, how many of y'all were raised in the 60s? You remember a childhood in the 60s? I do. I do. When did it become illegal to slap a kid in the mouth? Because I wish Jim and Joyce Summers would have known that. That would have been good. My teeth would be a lot straighter than they are now. I, you've got to be kidding me. Where was CPS when I needed them? I got I I, I just get a little get a little attention de deficit disorder. Uh, uh, you know, I had that. What is it? Uh, DDT or something? ADHD. Yeah. And 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 I had. And mom would say you're you're struggling with your spelling, and I'm a first grader, and I'm having trouble with big words like it. <laughs> and so. Mom sits me down in a chair over here with Channel View where I was raised. And, 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 and she, the only time us Pentecostal kids could wear short bridges 
was when you were inside the house. Well, good that did. Never mind. I, I'm sitting there with short breeches on, and, and mom, I you know, I get like some of y'all whenever during worship, y'all count the squares in the ceiling <laughs> while we're trying to worship up here. I love the way you're shouting now. And, 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 and I got to looking around. Mom said, come on, spell cat. And I, you know, cat. That, and she'd spell it for me, <coughs> do a test run on it, whatever. And then she'd look at me again and say, I, come on. I said, spell cat. And I'd look up and go to wander. And again, she'd take that little teen switch right between those bare legs. Whack, 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 whack. Real good. And I'd spell El Gato. <laughs> That's cat in Spanish. I, man, I'm telling you. Where was CPS when we really needed CPS? Some of us kids, did you know we had ADHD, but you could cure it with leather? <laughs> so I get in the truck. I, I, I get in my big dually and my farm truck, and I drive down the road and pull up in her boyfriend's driveway and her little mealy mouth dad comes to the door and and I don't even know that this family is a Christian family or not I really didn't know one way or the other but I didn't realize he was going to become a prophet just like that because in my mind he must have seen what I was thinking because when I walked up on that porch I could see myself reaching through that screen door and thank you <laughs> I realized then that it wasn't the Holy Spirit, but it was that spirit of channel view that had its grip on me. That redneck stuff. Had a, yeah, you folks think you know what rednecks are out here, but in channel view, we had real rednecks. They checked us every day for a gun or a knife. You didn't have one, they give you one. <laughs> man, when I walked up on that man's porch and he looked right in my eyes and he said, Reverend, there's the big word. There it is. Uh, yeah, R E B. Mona, one time I was over uh, over North Shore, and I, I, I was going to fix a step off the curb, and Mona, that car almost hit me. Car almost got me. Mona got me by my belt loop, pulled me back up on that curb, and I gestured, boy, that guy like they got me. Whoa! And he showed me his team was number one, I think. <laughs> And then I was ready to fight, and I started hollering and yelling at him. And Mona used that word, Reverend Summers. <laughs> Reverend Summers, you need to settle down. And boy, when he used that word on that porch, Reverend, he said, do I need to call the Liberty County Sheriff? And I thought, my Lord, he, he saw right into my spirit. Hey, my goodness, he could see me punch throat me. Uh, yeah, punch throating him through that yeah, throat punching him or whatever. I, buddy, I was I was so upset. My my little girl. I went home and for forty eight hours, Mona and I just grieved over this kid being missing. That night, I'll never forget. On Saturday night, I walked over to the church. Mona said, "You got to get up. You got to preach Sunday morning. You got a church full of folks that need." Some hope in life. I said, man, I'm not the guy to preach for them. I can't even raise my family right. I can't even raise my kids right. And can I tell you, the, the Spirit of God got a hold of me. I was up under an altar, laying on top of a date's annotated Bible. And he took me to Mark, the fifth chapter. Yeah, the Holy Ghost just treats me different than everybody else. He's so sweet and kind to y'all, and he has to drag my backside out from underneath the altar. Get out from underneath there. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He, I went to Mark, the fifth chapter, and I started reading there. And it's where Jesus has performed the wonderful miracle where he puts a calm on the water, and the storm cease at his command. That's a great story, right? And the other three Gospels <coughs> look almost the same as Mark, except a few verses later, Mark is the only one that records this in the entire Bible. In the four Gospels there, 
He says, and there were other little ships with him also. The disciples thought they were the only ones that were in a storm in their life. And God said, no, I want to show you something. Look, Mark, there's other little ships out here. God spoke to me on that Saturday night and said, you think you're the only one that's had a kid ever run away from home? You think you're the only one that's ever had a struggle in life? You think you're the only one that's in a foxhole tonight? And I sat back and I wept and I, 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 I repented before God. God, I'm, I'm sorry I hadn't put this in your hands earlier. It was just a, another 24 hours later that God put Janelle back in our home and she's been just a, a, a great asset to our home. When she was a teenager, I'll tell this, and, and where was the sister that was on the piano? Where's is she? Hey, oh, right there. Hey, come back. You play a little music. And uh, I may not quit, but you'll give them some hope. <laughs> when Janelle was a teenager, even before that occasion, baby, you remember what your favorite word was to us? I can tell you, whatever. And, but, but your kid wasn't as talented as mine. In saying that, she could gnarl her face and contort it all at one time. And you felt the dagger go in and twist when she said, whatever. So all of that is is blown over and she raises her oldest daughter. And, and, and Reagan is what, 24 now or 25? And Reagan is at my home. Reagan's about 12 years old. The age really you ought to peach their heads off and tell God they died. <laughs> and she's not having a good time at my house. She's really not, it's a bad day. So I put her on her phone. I said, you get on the phone, call your mama. Your mama can come pick you up, take you out of here. And uh, she gets on the phone. Well, I'm watching her talk to her mother. In a few moments, I saw the greatest revelation when I saw my granddaughter talking to her mama on the phone and Reagan's face contorted and gnarled. And she looked in that phone and said, whatever. And I began to shout and holler in the house, there is a God. <laughs> Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. There, there is all about this. And I can hear her yell in the background, shut up, Daddy. <laughs> what are you preaching to us, Brother Gene? Hey, there was a day you had joy in your life. There was a day you were on fire for God. But the enemy of your soul put a target on everything sweet and good in your life. I don't know if it was an illness in your home. I don't know if it was your finances, your marriage. Somebody did you terribly wrong. I'll tell you, friend, it happens over and over and over again. We recognize that the enemy of our soul, like when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a weapon against him, a standard against him. Jesus said, about the thief, he said, it comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. David would declare he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him shall I trust. <laughs> Scripture would tell us He's a very present help in time of trouble. You've done all you know to do. You got kids and you got grandkids that will not come to church, will not live for God. 
And I'm telling you, don't, please don't give up now. I'm nearer home than I was yesterday. We're, I, I, I believe the, I don't believe there's got to be another golden calf spotted in Israel. I don't, I don't think we're waiting for what somebody wrote an old southern gospel tune that the Hawksworths probably sang years ago. I stopped looking for the signs and started listening for the sound. I'm, I'm ready for a trumpet blast. So whatever you do, don't get discouraged now. I, I know depression is real. I know discouragement. And th things can get tough. All I've known to do all this time is put my hand in His and hold on to His strong hand. Bible tells us that there is power and might in the right hand of God. And all He's telling you to do, trust me. Trust me, I got this. Trust me. My family's been through some battles, but look what God's doing for us now. We prayed this in here. Oh, Ted doesn't even know it. We prayed him in here. We prayed. Yeah, come on. Y'all got some families? Enemies tried to come in and destroy, bring satanic attack, tear down your health. Mom and dad, they were people, the doctors at Texas Children's Hospital said, give up on that little boy. He's got muscular dystrophy. We certainly don't have a cure for it. We just now figured out a word for it. It's a dystrophy and it's muscular. So that's what it is. And he'll die with it. Until the morning I pushed myself out of my mama's arms. Had not walked in over two and a half years and I ran to the doctor's office something I had not been able to do in several years and God gloriously healed me. My mom and daddy then decided we're not walking out of this. This is the best thing we've ever found. And I'm asking God to just show up today and give you testimony of his miracle working yes. power. Amen. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> I don't need much of a fire right now to get me started. I just... I just know how good a God he's been to my family. Amen. And he doesn't love us any more than he loves you. I don't know what you're battling. Stand with me. Stand with me. Ooh. Mona, come stand with me. Come up, come. I don't know what you're battling. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I have to tell people, don't feel sorry for us. We love what we're doing. We go through some battles. But I stand here in total belief and believe that, that we lay hands on the sick. The Bible says they shall recover. It doesn't say they might. It says they shall recover. We have no reason to believe anything different. I don't know if it's your finances. I don't know what you're battling. But God's got a way out of this thing for you. I hate a thief. I hate the devil. He's just doing his best to plant seeds of doubt in your heart and life. And you, I'm telling you, don't receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I pray? And then we'll call some of you to come for prayer. Father, I just pray right now that the Spirit of God would just sweep over this auditorium at West Bay Assembly right here in Dickinson, Texas. I pray, God, that you be the lifter of our soul, the foundation that we stand upon, and that there is encouragement being built in this room. No matter what they're facing, no matter what satanic attack is coming, I, I know Goliath's got kids, and they just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, like Job's troubles and Job's trials. But I pray, God, right now, you have decided, you have made issue with the enemy gave us the authority to declare get thee behind me Satan yes. Yes. we plead the blood of Jesus Christ yes. over those that need touch this morning you're here this morning you say brother G I just need prayer I walk out on God I'm not mad at God he's not mad at me I just need somebody to agree with me why don't you come I'm going to pray for you I just want to agree with you come on come on step out by faith 
You come. Yes, sister, come. Come on. Come on. I didn't preach like this this morning. Just to dismiss and, and, and pastor and take us out of here. I, I, I want you to come. I want to believe God for you. You just come and stand. Let us come and join hands with you. Lay hands on you. And believe God's going to do something supernatural in your life. He's that kind of a God. Amen. Woo! I know that's why he gave you this message. Nobody wants to talk about Goliath's got kids. But we know it. It's one, one little wave after another that does its best to knock us down. And I want you to have real deliverance today. In Jesus' name.